by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to do your work on a whole new level. Hey, it's Chris, and I'm guessing there's plenty of you out there like me who are constantly saving cool and useful snippets of things, tweets, quotes, videos, ideas, things that make it into your notes app and then disappear forever. Kind of like they've got sucked into a black hole, never to be seen from or heard from again. But I wanted to see if there wasn't a way to not just save, but actually put to use at the right time for the right task, all of that useful information. I'll give you an example. Here's a bunch of stuff I've saved on writing and there's this one particular thing that I saved, this framework here from Nicholas Cole on great tips on how to get the most out of the content that you write. I saved that about three months ago and I never looked at it and never even thought about it again until recently when I was putting together the method I'm about to show you for this system. And I was like, oh wow, that's great stuff. I wish I could use it. Well, now I can. So the solution I came up with for not losing all these great insights into the notes abyss is called the Cognitive Catalysts method. What's a cognitive catalyst? A cognitive catalyst is a useful insight. It's either your own observation or idea or somebody else's, something you ran into on the internet. It's information that you can apply and once it's applied, it sparks creativity, it sparks productivity, it sparks innovation for a specific task or activity. And the keyword here is applied because a saved insight, something that you've curated and stashed away in the black hole, that's not a catalyst because you haven't done anything with it, hasn't catalyzed anything. On the other hand, an applied insight, that's a catalyst. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how you can apply those insights to the tasks and activities that you're working on. So you save insights, yours and other people's. These are your cognitive catalysts. And here's my My Mind app where I've saved a whole bunch. This is just my writing uh, things that I've saved related to writing. So maybe like me, you've got a big library already built up, or maybe you don't yet. And today's the day that you're gonna start saving and curating and cataloging these catalysts so that you can deploy them strategically when it's time to tackle a certain activity or task. Now, originally I geared this towards work and the example I'm gonna be showing off today has to do with writing. So I can harness my cognitive catalyst so I can write at the highest possible level whenever I sit down to actually type something out. But it's also gonna work for any activity that you do often and you want to do well or do better. So that could be other work-related stuff like if you're a logo designer or maybe AI prompt engineering, but it can also be stuff like fitness and weightlifting when you gotta get into the zone. You know, if you've done a lot of research on stuff, but you always forget it when it comes time to use it, this works in that situation too. Obviously though, if you don't save any insights, you're not gonna be able to deploy any insights when the time comes. If you've never used Tana before, I'm gonna link it up down in the description for you, but they just released a really great app called Tana Capture. It lets you capture anything, anywhere, super quick, super fast, really painlessly. So you can use it inside the Tana app, which is really useful, definitely a productivity powerhouse. But on the other hand, for years I've bookmarked stuff inside Twitter with Twitter bookmarks. I've saved tons and tons of just observations I have about life and work in my drafts app. And like I've already mentioned, I store all kinds of stuff in the My Mind app, which I love. And that kind of acts as my permanent archive. And here's how things basically work. We've got a three-step process. First, you capture things. You capture those insights, your cognitive catalyst. Number two, you're gonna cherry pick and organize the best cognitive insights based on the action into context collections. What's a context collection? Well, let me show you a context collection that I've set up for writing in free form. Remember, any activity that you want to be awesome at, that you wanna do better, you can create a context collection for that. And inside, you're gonna store all the relative cognitive catalysts that you've collected, all the great insights that you might wanna reference and stick them in a centralized collection. Now, it's not like there's an app floating around dedicated to this method yet, although who knows, maybe somebody's gonna see an opportunity after watching this video and go ahead and create it. But where and how you create a context collection can take many different forms. This is free form, obviously, but I'll show you what that could look like in a few different apps in a minute. But essentially, what a context collection really is, is a curation of your previous curations. Again, you're cherry picking the best cognitive catalysts and you're stashing them, the things that are gonna move the needle for any given activity inside 
a given collection. And you'll notice I've come up with an interesting structure for this particular collection. Instead of just a big random jumble of assets piled on top of each other, I kind of have a four quadrant setup here. I've got a section for motivation, for goals, for tips, and for observations. I've essentially subdivided my collection so that I can easily access whatever feels relevant at any given time. So you might choose to add something like checklists or templates that you might wanna follow for repeatable tasks. So use your imagination. There's no right or wrong here, but basically I'm arming myself so that when I go to write for a writing session, I'm gonna be deadly. Now, before we continue to break this down, I just have to point out, this is all great, but if this board itself, my context collection itself, disappears into the black hole, into the abyss, and I never see it again, then it's pointless. Just as pointless as the insights or the catalysts that might get lost in my notes app. Anyway, so you have to systematize the reviewing of your collections. Some people might wanna surface their collection at the beginning of each Pomodoro session that they're doing. If that works into your productivity system, this could work good alongside something like the getting things done method as well. Maybe you're gonna put it on your calendar as an item to remind yourself or set an alarm, or maybe you're just gonna kinda of keep it casual. Somebody out there might set a reminder or put a physical sticky note somewhere on their desk. But the idea is when you get started with your core competency, whatever the activity is, whether it's weightlifting or writing or logo design or AI prompt engineering, whatever it is, you wanna start with a quick review of your context collection. You know, maybe you start a timer and you're like, okay, I'm gonna check this out for three minutes. Or maybe you're like, you know, right now the way I'm feeling as I'm starting to write is demotivated. So, so in that case, maybe you're gonna take a look at the motivation section to kind of pump up or your goals, check in with your goals and see why were you doing this in the first place and that might fuel you up a little bit. And if that's how you're doing it, sort of contextually, based on how you're feeling or what you need at any given time, then maybe you're plenty motivated and instead you just wanna dive right into the tips, like how can I really do the best in this particular session here? And just sort of start mining the best of the best insights from your Catalyst catalog. Or maybe there's some specific observations you've made for yourself and you wanna remember, okay, I write best in the early morning or I should be definitely using Brain.fm's creativity playlist, not the focus playlist. But you can keep in front of you the relevant information that you've collected over time. It's sort of like gaining and not losing momentum. You know, you push a boulder down a hill and kind of roll slowly at first, but then gravity takes over and it gains speed and keeps going faster and faster. That's kind of this system. It bakes in the wisdom that you've collected from yourself and from other people, and it deploys it at exactly the right moment. So a quick little three minute review or whatever works for you is a good way to start thinking about implementing this. Now, one cool thing you can try is opening up shortcuts, click on the gallery and hit search and search for split. And there's a cool shortcut called split screen two apps. And if you set that up, you can have it open up your context collection on one side, whatever the app is that you're using for it, and the app that you do your work in, let's say a writing app, on the other side of the screen, right? So with the push of a button, I can launch something like this. I've got my writing app, IA Writer, over on the right, and that could be anything that you wanted instead. And then over on the left, I've got my uh, catalyst in my collection ready to go, loaded up. And you could have several of these set up for the different activities that you wanna use in the different context collections that you have set up for quickly switching between them. Now, finally, to keep this system running at peak efficiency, you are gonna wanna maintain it. Anything awesome in life requires maintenance. Doesn't matter if you just bought a house or a car or you're in a relationship or a system like this, productivity system, you have to maintain it. So setting up a review, maybe weekly, maybe monthly, or once a quarter to kind of prune stuff, add new stuff, make sure that it's up to date and still useful to you is gonna be key. Now, if you like this kind of stuff and you're new around here or you just haven't signed up yet, I did just launch a productivity course that's gonna help you be more efficient, get more done quicker with less burnout within the Apple ecosystem. If you're interested in checking it out, it's called Learning to Be Productive and I've linked it up down below. You definitely wanna get in there while we still have the inflation relief pricing uh, before the price goes up. All right, so I've kind of showed you one way that you can set this up in free form, but let's talk about what it might look like in a few other apps. I've got Notion open up here and you can see I've set up some context collections in Notion. Looks a lot different than over in Freeform, doesn't it? A little bit cleaner, maybe you prefer this look. But if I open up my writing collection, I've got the same four things there, motivation, goals, tips, and observations, just like I have over in Freeform. Except here, I'm using Notion's toggle list option with these little 
triangles and they're expandable. So when you tap on it, it can expand, but it's within a list. So I can open up motivation there and I can see some of that motivation for myself. And what I like about using Notion is that it's super minimal and clean and it's not cluttered and you can still add in assets like videos and photos but then hide them out of the way with the toggle feature so it's not visually overwhelming but then you could also use something like mindnode mindnode is the mind mapping app that's been around for a long time but here i've got the same thing context collections writing video editing business back end so i can come in here and add one for my newsletter i probably should because that's something that i do every week in fact you should check that out as well it's called the daily tech newsletter really high open rate helps you discover accessories and apps and services that you would love as an apple user i'll link that up down below too but you can use the nodes that can be expanded within mind node or other mind mapping apps to kind of map things out as well or you can come in and fold those nodes to kind of keep them back out of the way as well and here i'll just open up the motivation and there it is and you can also add notes to stuff uh, here as well. So it's kind of just whatever method you end up preferring, whatever look you like, whatever feels the most organized and relevant to you, that's the method that you should use. Now, I'm gonna come back to Freeform, and as I zoom this out, you can see, you know, there's a decent amount of information in here. So just a couple things to mention. Number one, obviously, it can take a while to set up a context collection. I think this particular one took me about 30 minutes to seed to get started, which isn't too bad. It's a time investment. So you're gonna invest your time and it's gonna pay off over and over and over again every time you sit down to do the activity. In this case, writing. It's gonna supercharge that activity. But I'll also say, I think a lot of people are gonna end up using this as a learning system because if you think about it, every time you sit down to do whatever the activity is, presumably for your work, several times a week or even a day, and you start with this context collection and you're keeping valuable stuff in front of your head, what's gonna happen? You're probably gonna to start to really absorb it, not just reference it, but keep it stored in your head, start to memorize it. And you get this space repetition kind of going on. And after a while, as you fire up the app, you know just where things are, you've learned it, you've absorbed it. And I think there's something kind of magic happening there because as I've been using this, when you open it up, your brain anticipates what there is and what to look for, and you learn by doing. So you find the nuggets of information, you apply them, and the more that you see them and ex are exposed to them and apply them over and over and over again, it just gets baked into you, into your habits, into your routines, and you become stronger and more capable in terms of whatever the activity is that you're doing. It's really powerful, but that's also why you need to review this you know, every 30 days or every couple of weeks or however long and make sure that you're switching out information, keeping it fresh, because if it gets stale, you're gonna stop using it right? So maybe that means having a, an archive off to the side, moving some of the stuff you're really familiar with over here so you can still reference it, you know, assuming you're using an infinite whiteboard app like Freeform or Miro or Muse uh, and putting some fresh content in there as you discover it. So hopefully you found a new tool for your productivity toolbox that you can integrate into your workflow to upgrade the work that you're doing, kind of give it a boost. If you want some additional boost, then check out the Learning to Be Productive Productivity course before the limited time pricing runs out. That's linked up down below. Check out the newsletter I mentioned. I think you're gonna love it if you're in the Apple ecosystem. And other than that, since this is brand new, never before shared material, this method, if you go out and implement this, if you try it, I would love to hear your feedback. So leave me some comments and suggestions. You know, Write a comment down there being like, hey, this is how I set it up, or this is what I think would work better. You know, I shared a few ways that you could implement this, but I'd be really curious to see what you could dream up or how you might choose to implement it and actually get some use out of it. So let me know and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.